Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com and with the Quantus Asylum, the QA401. It's running in test right now. You might be able to see some some stuff going on here in the mix sig behind me. Um, I got my computer back here recording the tests. I'm going to show you a bunch of tests. This is going to be really cool. This is a pretty amazing tool and I haven't even touched the surface of what it can do. And I looked at my first video and basically it was just kind of how to set it up and stuff. It wasn't wasn't even good enough for me to know how to use it. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to show you how I set it up. It's pretty simple actually. And I'm going to show you the results of these tests. Now, it's what it does is it's going to start at a... The test it's doing right now, it's starting at a low voltage level. And then it steps up in the increments. And each time, at each voltage level, it crosses... <clears throat> At each voltage level, it starts at, I think I've got it set at 10 hertz now, and it goes out to 50K, I believe is what I have it set. Yeah, I've tried different things, but 10 hertz to 50K, and it starts off at a low voltage level, and it goes to different frequencies, and it plots the Boldy plot, okay? But it's interesting because... What it's going to do is it's going to see how flat it is at each one of these voltage levels. Instead of just one watt like the typical measurement's done, we're going to start off at all these different wattage levels, okay? I'll, I'll show them here in the video, but we're going to go right up to 40 watts max. And I have um, a 4 ohm resistor. I actually have 4 ohm resistors on left and right channel. I'm only capturing the data on the left channel but both channels are being powered so both so the power supply basically is having to supply the power to both channels 40 watts max and I guess it's stopped now and there's graphs right over there so I'm going to show you this test and I'm going to speed through the test okay so that you don't have to sit there and you know it takes gosh I don't know it might take five minutes to go run through this whole thing so but I'm going to do that, and then we're going to just do some other tests. So let me just show you these tests right now. And then uh, what we're going to do next is the distortion test. Basically the same thing except for the Bode plot. I'm going to show you the distortion at each one, you know, at each one of those voltage levels. Okay? So this may be really cool. We're going to do a series of tests, and we're going to try to see how good this guy is. And also all the cool tests that this thing can do for you. Okay? All right, let's just jump into this thing. I'm going to first show you this test I just did, and then I'll come over and show you this setup, and then I'll run through some other tests, and we'll talk about those as we go. Okay? All right. Thanks for hanging out here with me, and this ought to be fun. All right, guys. So I'm using this camera right here just to make it easy so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm showing you the quantum QA401 audio analyzer. I've got the output right here on the left channel and I got the input right here on the left channel. So there's input and output, show you the top side. And then there's the amp. It's turned off right now. And then I'll just turn this on and you'll see the lights come on the front. But I'm gonna turn it off right now because um, we're gonna let this warm up in a minute, but I wanna first do this video. Hey, my safety glasses, see? And I got the top on here too for safety. So on the back side, here's the input coming in, all right? And then over here, uh, the output is right here, these two leads right here, okay? All right, so the way this input works is I've got these two guys tied in parallel over here, okay? They're wired together, and I've got differential probes so I can look at the output. And I've got this guy, and so he is tied to this guy, which is tied to that guy, shorted to them. So they're all sh all the inputs are shorted together. The reason I have extra sets is so that my friend can hook up his woofer uh, to the input. So, anyways, that way he doesn't have to wire him off. And then the output speaker terminal, so you can see the speakers. So here's the speaker, or the well, I'm calling them speakers, but the four ohm loads. Okay, 4 ohm, there's an 8 ohm, a 4 ohm, and then an 8 ohm. Okay, 
and and then there's the pico scope that i'll be using okay and then if i want to look at this guy i got the key up there for thd so yeah that's the setup okay and then uh i got my pico scope which i'm not going to use i'm going to bring my laptop set it here and hook up that quantum right so i'm going to show you the test results All right, guys, so here we are with the Quanta Asylum Analyzer. And the window on the left shows our graph, our output. We're going to see some stuff going on here. We have 256K FFT, which is amazing. Resolution is less than 1 hertz, 732 millihertz. So really nice specs on this, just amazing. Over here on the right, we're going to look at frequency. That's here at the bottom, across down here. And we're going to look at the input, which is the output of the amplifier. And we're going to look at the left channel. Even though the left and right channel is going to be, will be driven, axes, decibel volts. You can see dB volts over here. X log. Down here is this logarithmic, the X. All right, so it looks like we're all set up. We're ready to go. We got Hanning and we got RMS, THD, all this stuff. Generator one, run stop. So, okay, I think we're ready to go. So what we're gonna do is come up here to one of their test protocols, this ampl amplitude gain, and uh, let's do gain response first, okay? And we're gonna go from Minus 10 to 0 dBVs, which will take us to 40 volts in the 4 ohms. We have 4 ohm loads on left and right channel. Even though we're only looking at the left channel, both channels are being driven. And 10 hertz to 50 kilohertz. All right. Let's run it. I'm going to move this window over here where it will be out of our way. And there's our signal right there. Look at that, around 20 dBs. And our harmonic noise is over here. And it's down almost 30 dB. So 50 dB from signal to noise. Now look over here. Over here you see this peak at 60 Hertz. See this 100 Hertz here? This is 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And that is 120 Hertz, so that's the act, you know, going through the bridge rectifier, we end up at the 120. That's where the power really is. But we still see the 60 hertz component. And then we see harmonics. This is 120. This is probably 180. And this is 240. Because this is 200 here. So, yeah. So, there you go. So, all this noise is from the power supply, which is really low down here. Remember, every 20 dBs is 10 times. If one volt is up here, this is, you know, 20 dBs down. It's going to be 100 millivolts. Another 20 dB is going to be 10 millivolts. Okay, that first signal was right around 300 millivolts in, I think it was. This one's 413. The output's about 5 volts. First one output was around just over about 4.2 volts. That first one we saw was probably about uh, just over 4 ohms. So that first one we saw was probably just about 4 watts because it was about 4.2 volts out with around 300 something millivolts in. This one's 5.3 volts out. So as the signal goes off the screen, this noise here is just from the power supply. This is our low frequency switching power supply, our diode rectifiers, which are switching on and off. So it's not a linear power supply, it's a low frequency switcher. Now we see a little bit more noise, and this is from our new our signal. Here's the first harmonic right here. Well, it's the third harmonic, the, the first big harmonic after the peak. And the peak's just what is that, 22, 
dBs, and this is down here almost minus 20 dBs, so about 40 dBs difference. So that comes out to about 100 times difference from the signal to the first noise. So up here you see minus 60 dBs. So this one that's going to be coming through is, here's the first, that third harmonic, which is the first big peak after the, there we go, there's our signal right there. So this one's about 15 dBs down, and this, you know, minus 15, and this one is about 25 dBs up. See, right up here, 25 dB. So this one's about 8.4 volts out and about 640 millivolts in. Okay, guys, it's about 10.5 volts out and about 819 millivolts in, something like that. Okay, guys, the next one, 0 dB. See up here? So it's going to be about 1 volt input with about almost 13 volts on the output. Thir well, sorry, about 13.5 volts or something like that. So you can see it up here. And there's this third harmonic right there. See one. Hey guys, I want to show you something. As this peak comes to one kilohertz, see where this guy lands. See two kilohertz. So that's actually the second harmonic. I was wrong over here. I was thinking it was further away, but it's actually only the second harmonic. This is a third harmonic. So even the harmonics, the loudest or the largest spike. All right, there's our graph. Let's blow it up. Oh, wow, that's weird. That's weird when I open it up that way. It makes the graph teeny. Look at that. That's so weird. All right, and so here's our graph. Let me see if I can make it bigger this time. I wish they wouldn't make this big thing up here big and make the graph big instead. That's kind of weird. If I stretch it this way, all right, whatever. Um, that's kind of crazy how this thing makes graphs. I think it's might be the resolution on my screen. But over here on the right side is the uh, degrees, and we're going 50 here, 60, 70, 80, 90, like plus or minus 90 degrees. And you can see 20 hertz is right here. We're just about 20 dBs. And then it drops down at 20 kilohertz. We're down around 60, 70, 80, 90 uh, dBs. About 90 degrees right here. So that's the phase. The gain comes up. And right here at 10 hertz, it holds pretty darn flat out to here and st starts to roll off 10k here so let me see we if we drop down 3 dbs to about 25 somewhere around in here so it's somewhere between see 20 kilohertz is over here and it's already dropped down a bit more there so yeah so we're starting to drop off in frequency a little bit soon i think Okay guys, so this test, what we're gonna look at is THG versus frequency. The total harmonic distortion versus what each frequency. So let's say at one kilohertz, that's where the common test is done. Is it the same at 100 hertz or 10 kilohertz? We wanna see that. So we're gonna graph that, okay? We're gonna see what the total harmonic distortion is across frequencies. Now, what we like to see, what I like to see is usually 0.1 or less. 
Uh, some people say under 1% you can't hear the difference. So, but anyway, we'll, we'll plot that and see what it is. Now, Class A amps, especially tube amplifiers, are known to have higher distortion, but a lot of people love Class A sound. So, huh, interesting. Well, just one side note to that. Uh, there is a difference between odd harmonics and even harmonics as far as psychoacoustics of what we like. And so I think tubes are even harmonics. Do I have that right? So I don't know. That, you know, anyway, let's go check it out. Let me know what you guys think of the results. Give me comments below what you think of what you have read or what you may have experienced as far as THD goes, all right? It is one of those marketing terms because everybody, oh, noise, oh, that must be bad. Total harmonic noise, that sounds really technical. That must be bad. So I remember when apps would, they would try to say 0.1%, 0.01, 0.001, you know, stuff like that. And, and it's pointer, I've kind of proven to myself that you can actually ruin an amplifier by trying to get too much uh, or too low of THD. So it's kind of like putting the reins. One way to get low THD, by the way, is you put a lot of feedback. And what I've noticed when I did that myself in some amplifiers is that uh, when you do a lot of feedback, get really low total harmonic distortion, it doesn't sound good. It, it sounds like, so it's like putting a leash on a dog that's too short. It's like putting the reins on the horse. Like as soon as it wants to take off, you're just pulling it back all the time. And by not having all that feedback, it just lets it run free. Well, this amplifier basically has no feedback, has a DC servo loop, but, uh, but that's different than class A. That's This one happens to have class A plus that kind of performance. So, Let's, anyway, let's just come back and I guess I'm preparing you that I I think the, the test results aren't going to be like, you know, super low. So anyway, let's just see what they look like. Whoops. Let's do this test where we do uh, THD versus frequency. It'll start off at lower levels and eventually get up to our 40 watt max output into four ohms okay just moving this thing out of the way All right, there it is, the graph. Pretty Looking pretty good. Let me stretch it out a little bit. Very interesting graph. So this is uh, frequency across the bottom. THC plus N, remember that, plus noise. And over on the right, we got percentages. And on the left, we have dBs. Uh, I think a lot of us are used to perfect, uh, the percentages, right? So... Here's point 0.1. Point, anything below point 0.1 I th think is really good. And over here up to this frequency, about almost 200 hertz, low frequencies, it's better. And it's interesting. It takes kind of a swoop up around 200 hertz and stays below 1% for most power levels. These are all different power levels. The pink one on top is the 40 watt. And... Down here, I think it's four watts. I have to do the math, but anyway, stays pretty flat around two kilohertz. It kind of rises and 
it gets up to almost 10%, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, that's that seems high. It's not clipping, so that seems high. And then it drops off at 10K and then kind of comes up at 20K. So this is kind of an interesting part of the curve. Not, I think part of the reason it drops off is because the roll off on this amp is right around 10K to 20K. So it starts dropping off. So it's interesting that the distortion drops off so quickly. This is a kind of roll off of the amplifier here and it's smoother but yeah it's just interesting how this works but um one percent's right here you know this is at 40 watts at high frequencies you're probably not going to hear that honestly but anyway let me know what you guys think of this curve i think it's pretty interesting looking curve class a amp 20 watt uh wow I mean, this amp right now on my bench is very hot. All right, guys. Interesting. All right, guys. So this test is going to be THD over power levels. This test is often done at 1 kilohertz at 1 watt. But that's just, you know, it's just a place to compare other amps to. But is it a good test? And so what we're going to do is we're going to go... From the one, well, actually, we're gonna. I think we're gonna start off at four watts and go to 40 watts, and we're gonna see how flat that curve is. But we're gonna add a little extra thing to it. We're gonna go THG plus N. So that's THG is all the harmonics, right? Total harmonic distortion. You know, so if we put it at one kilohertz, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on. And what we're gonna do with this is THG plus N. So that means that all the other noise caused by whatever else, it's all gonna be. Um, you know, sum together, okay? So anyway, we're going to take that THE plus N over all these power levels. Let's see how flat that curve is. All right, guys, this one is kind of similar but different because it'll be in percentage. But what we want to do is go THD versus gain, basically. Similar to what we did before, but here, let's just do it, and you know, you can see what it looks like. So here's the table, how we're going to set it up. And here we go. That's a fast test. Now that's from last time. And let's add a new graph. And here we are. All right, guys. So there you go. Uh, the minimum input to the maximum input that I ran this at, which again, 40 watts it crossed one percent right around in here probably and just barely over one percent thd at 40 watts so you know i think that's i think that's pretty good so this will be thd uh versus power and i'll put thd percentage all right guys the quant asylum has a little app where I can also do a test to do THD so we can graph that THD curve so we can graph it next to the second and third harmonic so now the second harmonic what we've seen here is the highest peak so that might be like two amps is that true guys do I have that right and the third harmonic okay so the her third harmonic is a lot smaller but we'll see that the THD is a sum of all the harmonic distortions together and I think what we've seen so far is that second harmonic is gigantic compared to the other ones especially because we're looking at you know remember we're looking at logarithmic curves here so the DB helps us look at all those peaks by kind of crunching them all together but if we looked at them linearly we would see that second harmonic way up here and the other ones way down here it'd be so hard to see so anyway when we look at the THG and next to the second and third I think you might be surprised maybe let's take a look okay guys so I want to do a THD versus power different power levels so we'll put a different input signal and increase the power and you know check out the power 
uh, or the distortion versus power. But what I want to do is I want to show you something about these curves, okay? This is the one kilohertz signal that we'll be injecting. Okay, I'm going to click on that. There it is, one kilohertz. It's at 22.89. Now this signal here, you can see all the technical information up here, 13.9. So that's that puts out about 40 watts into 4 ohms, okay? Then we have some THD information here. What I want to show you, this peak right here is the, whoops, there we go. Okay, that right there is 120 hertz. Okay, that's from the power supply after the bridge rectification and converts to 60 hertz to 120. The 60 hertz is this first peak over here. But what I want to show you is even next to this one kilohertz, you can see next to each one of these spikes, there's, if you notice, there's a left and right bump next to them. See that? These first three, a little bit more obvious. And then down here, you start adding and subtracting all these harmonics, and that's why it looks so busy. But you can see how the signal is dropping. So this stuff here is so low in amplitude, especially compared to the output of 40 watts. Even this spike here, this one here is most of the distortion. And then these guys don't add much to it. And I'll show you that in a moment. But what I want to show you is these other peaks here, what they are. Okay, right there, 880. What is that? 1K minus 120 is 880. Now, watch this guy on the other side. Get the cursor there. There we go. 1.12. So, 1 kilohertz plus 120 hertz. So, those are the... That's this 120 kilohertz being modulated by this 1 kilohertz. So, being modulated means... It's this one kilohertz is a carrier, but it has 120 hertz on top of it, but it adds it and it subtracts it. So that's how you get all these harmonics. These are sub harmonics on the, on the other side, and these are the you know the plus harmonics on this side. Okay, so just wanted to point that out. Now let's come up here to the plugin. We'll come down here to this gain distortion amplitude test. Let's run this test. Minus 10 to zero. The zero will be uh, putting out 40 watts into four ohms. Okay, we're going to increment it by two. We're going to plot distortion and we're going to plot this uh, second and third harmonic right here. Okay, test frequencies one kilohertz. We could change that, but one kilohertz gives a chance for all those harmonics to get added. So that's kind of a good test frequency. Let's go ahead and run that. You can see the signal growing as the input signal. Whoa, that was fast. Okay, here I'm going to stretch this out. And here's our curves. Whoa, these two curves are so close to each other. I know there's two curves there. Let me show you. Uh, the black one, first of all, is the gain. See up here? Left gain. And that is super flat because this is 23 dBs up here on the top of this scale, the gain scale on the left. Down and it starts at 22. So that's 1 dB across this whole thing. This guy's just barely changing. So the gain looks really flat. And let's change the color of the THC's blue. But I swear there's, and see these two? They look like greens. I don't know why they're both green. Let's change one of them. The THL, you know, this is the second harmonic and it's teal. Let's change that to red. Yeah, you see the red and blue and they're practically on top of each other. And you can see this guy's a little bit further down. That's why he's not adding very much to the total harmonic distortion. I mean, it's kind of crazy that it adds so little, but this is in decibels. And so this guy here is about 37 dB at the peak. I mean, at 40 watts, because here's the power across here at the bottom. So the input goes to 0 dBs, which puts about 40 watts out. And the other one is all the way down here at minus 54, I'd say. So, yeah, every 20 dBs is 10 times different. So this might add like 10% to that. But, man, they're practically on top. That, that looks crazy. Let's add a title. Let's go THD versus... Uh, power. 
whoops, power at, at four ohms. Okay, there we go. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's see what other tests we can do. All right, guys, this is a, actually a very important test. With amplifiers, I, I find that they actually, they're designed to power speakers, four ohm, eight ohm loads with varying impedances. So most of the time I find them, you know, very capable. Design, you know, as a power supply engineer, when I design a power supply, there's this, there's this theory, you know, it's a, came up, it's a criterion, let's call it, the Middlebrook criterion. And what it says essentially is that if the output of your power supply is powering some device, that device has to have, that power supply has to have, say, 10 times lower output impedance. So let's say I'm powering something that looks like an 8 ohm speaker. Then I want 0.8 ohms as my output of my power supply so that my power supply doesn't get bogged down, loaded down, whatever, with the 8 ohm load. 8 ohm looks like huge impedance compared to the output impedance of the power supply. Well, amplifiers are very similar power supplies. So we want something like that. There's, you know, people, that they came up with a term called dampening factor to help show the output impedance of an amplifier compared to, you know, the, the load it's driving. And uh, so, you know, that's what it is, the output dampening factor. But what we're going to do is we're going to show the actual output impedance of this because, and so the way we're going to do this is I'll put a 4 ohm resistor on here, which I had been running all these tests with, and then I'll switch it to an 8 ohm. And the uh, Quant Asylum unit here, what he does, some magic, I guess, I don't know how he does it, I mean, I can guess because I understand how these tests are done. But what he's going to do is he's going to look at the the loading factor, you know, whatever. And he's going to, it's going to graph out the impedance, okay? So this should be a pretty interesting test. And, yeah, it'd be great. Let's say if we're driving uh, 4 ohm loads, I mean, it'd be great if it was 0.4 ohms or less. That I'd be happy with that. That would meet that. Middlebrook criterion for power supplies. So let's see if it does. Let's go run this test. Okay, guys, this next one is going to be output uh, impedance. And what we do is we run this a test, and it goes across frequency, and it measures its own, it measures the output impedance of the amplifier at two different resistances. Let me pull it up and show it to you. Output versus frequency right here. And we're going to run it at a level of minus 10 dB, 20, 20 K. And we're going to use 4 ohm and 8 ohm impedances. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this test. And the first test is going to be at 4 ohms. So hook that up. Let it run through. And here, I'll move this out of the way so in case you want to see that stuff up there. Okay, now we uh, install the 8 ohm and we run it again. Okay, we're going to add a new graph. All right, this is the graph we get. This is, I'll label it output Z versus frequency. All right, pretty cool. I'll increase the size of this in case you want to get a better look. But look at this. This is 0.2 ohms, 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So it's right in between there, right here. And stays really low and goes across zero at 10K. And yeah, actually goes negative. That's interesting. But very low impedance. All right, guys, so in this test, uh, this might be an interesting test. This is the, uh, called an IMD, Intermodulation Distortion Test. So what is that? 
you know, you can imagine, we always do these tests with the single frequency and we compare these things. But then in real music, you got all these frequencies on top of each other, right? And so what people have come up with, they kind of had to go, well, gosh, what if this happened or that happened? What if these two frequencies were playing at the same time? What would happen? And they try to, you know, think of different ways to come up with the wor worst case scenario. And if the amp distorted doing, say, two frequencies, then they could go, ah, see, look, intermodulation distortion. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the one where they we put out a 60 hertz because we're in the U.S. Uh, we're going to put out a 60 hertz waveform, okay? And it'll be four times bigger than, say, a music note that we would normally put that in. So let's say the power supply is really terrible, 60 hertz noise, really terrible. And then we'll put in 7 kilohertz. 7 kilohertz is in that hearing range. It's pretty bright. You can hear it pretty well. So we're going to go 7K and 60 hertz. When we put both of those signals in at the same time, what happens? So 7K is going to look like this, right? And 60 hertz is going to look like this. So you can imagine the 60 hertz is going to be four times bigger than the 7K. So we're going to have a 60 hertz um, carrier wave. You can think of it that way. And on top of that carrier wave, you're going to have this little high frequency signal going on top of it. What does that look like as far as distortion? Does that add a lot? Let's look at the waveform and I'll kind of show you what we're going to look at. We're going to use the PicoScope because um, I think it's a... Well, actually, I'm going to use two things. I'm going to use a quant asylum to put the signals out because it's very low noise. And we're going to use a picoscope to see what that looks like. Ah, let me know what you guys think. This should be interesting. Yeah, I've, I've played around with this before, and I find it to be a pretty interesting test. So let's take a look. All right, so I... I'm using the picoscope here and I have captured the inner modulation distortion. This is using a 60 hertz tone with four times amplitude of a 7 kilohertz tone. So right here we have captured the peak of the distortion here and this would be at 7 kilohertz and then off to the sides we got 60 hertz uh, plus minus tones. What I'm showing here are these cursor lines where we have 45 dB of difference between them and down here the measurement shows 0.43 percent IMD. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, I'm gonna back out this and show you. I got my zoom window here. I have the cursors here. First I'll turn off the cursors. Now I'll turn off the zoom window. So you see that right here and then here's some harmonics and they're way down here in the dirt but basically it's it's this stuff and the subharmonic okay and then we'd probably see the same thing like this at 14 kilohertz off to the side which here let's see if we do i'll go out to 20k takes a moment yeah right out here 14 kilohertz right there and now the other ones kind of got swallowed up over here. But yeah, so we see this kind of same thing uh, in the harmonic, in the second harmonic of each one of those out here. But yeah, they're so low. This is minus 55 dB. And this is what I zoomed in on right here at the plus minus 60 hertz of that. And then there's plus minus 20, 120 right down here. And then there's other multiplications of that down in here but so that's what we're looking at and this is the imd this is um the distortion caused by two signals at the same time let me show you those signals we're at the spectrum view right here to see up here and i'll come over here to uh scope view there we go now the way this generator works is it puts out a burst and then stops and then a burst and then it stops uh, it doesn't do continuous it'd be kind of cool if it, if it did i have other generators that will but the one i'm using is very low noise so that's why i'm using it 
It's coming from the Quant Asylum, and it has just very low noise. So, but that's it. This is 60 hertz right here, and the 7 kilohertz is riding on top of it. So that's what we're looking at with the THD. I can... <sighs> All right, guys, that's a lot of testing. Um, what do you think of the results? Class A amp, remember that. You know, it's not a Class A B solid state. Uh, you know, with lots of feedback that performs well during testing. So maybe in any one individual test, maybe it doesn't perform as well as you thought it would. But we have, I have listened to this with a friend of mine who we just love the sound of this thing. And we've listened to some other amps in between that comparing it to this. And this one does seem to perform really well. And, um... I don't know. What do you guys think of the test results? What do you guys think that they mean? Which ones are more important? You know, there's kind of a seesaw thing. Like, you know, for performance, you let this one, you know, not count as much and this one counts more. Or, you know, you want a good ratio from the testing that you've seen so far. Does it seem like we have that? Um, I did a couple of spot checks with 8 ohms, by the way. And... The results look very similar. But if you guys want to see all this stuff done with 8 ohms, I can do that. But let me know what you guys think of the testing, okay? What do you think? How does this thing perform? All right, two thumbs up to my patrons as always. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, yeah, things have been, you know, it's been great. Let's just say that. Thank you for everything. Thanks for you guys that hit that super thank you button that YouTube added down below where you can buy me a cup of coffee, whatever. Um, and uh, appreciate you guys watching the videos. Give them a thumbs up. Give them a like. Give them comments. That all helps for free, you know, and uh, supports the channel. So what do you think? <laughs> all right, guys. We'll catch you next time.